Chicago, we invite you to enjoy life. Life with Luigi, a new comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring J. Carol Nash with Alan Reed. A year ago, when Luigi Basco left Italy to start his new life in America, he promised his mother that he would write her and tell her about his adventures. So now we look over Luigi's shoulder as he writes another letter to Mama Basco in Italy. Dear Mamma Mia, in America is now big Christmas shopping season. Mamma Mia, you should see wonderful things they have here. Especially for the house. For instance, in old country, when it's washing, a woman take a wash to the creek, stand a barefoot, and a rub her clothes against the rock. Here in America, woman take a bundle to store full of washing machines. Put a wash in, the fella press a button, one, two, three, clothes it come out to clean. <laughs> All the woman needs is a strength enough to put in quarter and a husband to carry the bundle. <laughs> Our countryman Pasquale, who bring me here and has Spaghetti Palace next door, he's doing his Christmas shopping, too. But his shopping list has only one article. Husband for his fat daughter, Rosa. <laughs> and your son, Luigi, Mamma Mia, is a number one on Pasquale's list. <laughs> Mamma Mia, that Rosa, she's a big. When Rosa steps on a scale... A little ticket comes out with the one word. Help! <laughs> Outside this, my antique business is not so good. I guess people like to buy new things for Christmas, not antiques. If I have money, I like to buy lots of presents. Especially for my 12-year-old general manager, my boy Jimmy O'Connor. He's just coming home from school now, and he say... Hello, Mr. Luigi. Hello, Jimmy. How was school today? About the same. Well, what you writing? I'm sending out my Christmas cards. Who to? First one is to Pasquale. I make them up myself. Here, I read to you. Dear Pasquale, it's a pleasure to be here on a Christmas day. So thank you for the money that to bring me to USA. <laughs> not bad. P.S. Merry Christmas to your wife, and I'm not gonna marry Rosa. Happy New Year. <laughs> Any more, boss? Oh, here's the one to Miss Spaulding. Dear my teacher, Miss Spaulding, learning me so fine. Wait then to see the Christmas card I write in a 49. Hey, you're doing great, boss. Uh, here's one more. To President Truman. <laughs> Dear Mr. President, best wishes are from me. It's a pleasure that we both are where we want to be. <laughs> Like that. Well, now, Jimmy, what do you like for Christmas? Not a thing, boss. Why are you different from anyone else? Everybody wants something. Well, there isn't a thing I need, boss. Jimmy, if every kid talk like you, Santa Claus will go out of business. <laughs> boss, I'm not going to let you get me anything, so let's drop it. But, Jimmy, what is it you want the most that you can't get? Well, as long as I'm not going to get it, then a bike is the thing I want most. Well, is it two weeks before Christmas? Maybe Santa bring it to you. But I got the biggest surprise for you, Jimmy. See this? Oh, no, you bought another statue. It's a modern statue. See? It's a Paul Revere lamp. Beautiful, huh? How much? $60, that's all it costs. No. Yes? See? It's a horse. It's a little lantern light. Every store in town is selling, and we're buying. Can't help it, Jimmy. Paul Revere is a brave fella. I know. Listen, my children, and you shall hear of the midnight ride of Paul Revere. How you know this, Jimmy? Well, every kid knows it. It's from a poem by Longfellow. What's this Longfellow's name? <laughs> <laughs> that is his name. Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. He's a nice name. Maybe I sign my Christmas poems with the three names. Luigi Bosco Bosco. Luigi, my friend. <laughs> Hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. 
Hello, Pasquale. Hello, Jimmy. How's it with you? <laughs> Hello, Mr. Pasquale. I got a big surprise for you, Jimmy. Yeah? But I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to tell Luigi. So you go out and go in the back. All right, Jimmy. Go. Have us some milk. That's a nice boy, that Jimmy. I'm feeling sorry for him. Why are you sorry for him? He's all right. Is he going to have a Christmas tree? I don't know. Is he going to be a stocking and a chimney? I know have a chimney. You're lucky you got a stocking. <laughs> it's absolute a terrible shame for a boy like that to not to have a real Christmas with all of the trimmings. It's not my fault. I do the best I can. Shows he your fault. Is he your fault because you're single? What's a single got to do with a Christmas? Only people what's got a good Christmas is a family people. You should have seen my spaghetti house on a Christmas. It's a big tree with a little silver decorations, a little bulbs and the lights. <laughs> Pasquale, I like to see this. And then, then the lights, they spell out the word. Merry Christmas? No, special Christmas at dinner, two and a half a box. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds pretty. And then, then a rosa, she sneak down on a tiptoe early in the morning. <laughs> Hold the house to shake, cause she wake everybody up. <laughs> Maybe me and Jimmy would come to your house. Sure, of course. And the trees are gonna be a present for you. Thank you, Pasquale. Is it gonna be two single dollar bills, a green Christmas? What the for two dollars? That's the price of a marriage license. <laughs> I guess I'm gonna have a black Christmas. And for Jimmy, for him, I'm gonna have electric train. He's too big for electric train. Now, uh, this one is gonna be a super cheap. <laughs> Just the right for a boy his age. Even you like to play with it. <laughs> That's gonna be fun. Sure, sure. You're gonna have an engine and a cars right here in your store. But the tracks, are they gonna be in my house. Why? <laughs> Why, you say? Because when you wanna play, then you come over to my place. <laughs> is it gonna be a lot of fun? You and a Jimmy and a Rosa on the floor? Why are you always to bring up a rush? I'm her papa. Who else is going to bring her up? <laughs> Please, Pasquale. We're talking about a Christmas. It's time for a happy talk, not the Rosa talk. All right. I don't press to the subject, Luigi. I'm going to let things work out of themselves. Maybe Jimmy, he's a get to like her if he sees a lot of Rosa. If anyone sees a Rosa, he's a got to see a lot. <laughs> You know, maybe he's even going to get to call her mama. Pasquale, I'm not going to marry Rosa. Even if for Jimmy like her? Just to think of next year, what a happy Christmas he's a having with his grandpa. If he's my grandson, he's going to have everything. And what I have? Rosa. <laughs> what do you say, my son? Goodbye, Papa. <laughs> Are you in charge? See, si, I'm a Luigi Bosco. What can I do for you, lady? Do you happen to have any lamp? I have one lamp right here. Oh, my, that's original. It's Paul Revere on his horse. That's right. You like it? Yes. Is it not for sale? <laughs> I don't understand. Is it not hard to understand? I just buy it for myself. I'm crazy for Mr. Revere. Well, but aren't you in business to get money? See, si, I guess you're right. I need the money to buy little Jimmy a Christmas present. But what are you asking for the lamp? I'm asking $60, but if that's too much, I sell it cheaper. Uh, no, that's a fair price. I'll take it. All right, lady. I take him in the back and I wrap him up. Come on, Paul. Well, Mr. Revere, guess you've got to take another ride. In old days, you ride on a horse. Now, Jimmy, he's wanting to ride on a bicycle can't help it, Mr. Revere. I'm sorry. I know you only for a short time, but I'm already know a lot about you. You also immigrant, but when a country needs you, you say, okay, you fine soldier in wartime. You fine silversmith in peacetime. People always remember you because you ride in the night and you show people lantern light shining. Well, now you go to a lady's fine house. The light on this lamp shine there. And the people see you. And maybe they remember 
how you and other fellas fight. So there is always a light shining in America. Goodbye, Mr. Revere. Merry Christmas. Here, lady, is a Paul Revere. And here's your money, Mr. Basco. Would you mind putting the lamp in my car? It's the first time a Paul Revere is a horse to ride in a car. <laughs> Thank you. And a Merry Christmas. Same to you. And a happy Paul Revere. America, I love you. You're hey, America. Luigi! Excuse me, Pasquale, I'm in a big hurry. Where are you going this time? To the department store. Always running to some place. You going to buy something or just look around? I'm going to buy something. A tie? No, a toy. Where you get the money? I just to sell Paul Revere. Who's Paul Revere? He's a lamp. He's a lamp? How much you get for this human torch? <laughs> I get a $60. $60 for a lamp? People must be crazy. No, Pasquale. If you know Paul Revere, then you understand. I explain. Ah, oh, you explain. Fine. You remember Revolutionary War? Must have happened before I come here. <laughs> you remember Boston Tea Party? They don't invite to me. I don't go to no party. <laughs> no. No, Pasquale. It was like this. It was April 18, 70, 75. Paul Revere was a Luigi, home. Luigi, do me a favor. Go to the department store. By the time you finish explanation, Santa Claus is going to go back to the North Pole. <laughs> Mamma Mia! It's a big store and a big crowd. I wonder where is the bicycle department. Merry Christmas, children. Merry Christmas. Please, please, Santa Claus. Scram, kid, you're too old. Merry Christmas, everybody. Oh, Merry Christmas. Please, please, I'm looking for bicycle. Well, and have you been a good little boy all year? Yes, Santa Claus. Not you, dopey. Scram. <laughs> please, bicycle is not for me. It's for my boy Jimmy. Is a bicycle salesman here? See, here's my sixty dollars. Merry. He's probably necking with the perfume sales girl. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody. But where I can find the? But, hey, uh, hey uh, maybe I can help you. Thank you. Are you bicycle salesman? Not exactly. I want to buy a bicycle for my boy Jimmy. Hey, that's fine. And uh, here's my money. You shouldn't be waving it around like that. Put it in your coat pocket. Oh, thanks, Mister. Thanks. Hey, look, you got some of Santa's whiskers on your coat. You better let me give you a quick brush. Oh, oh, thank you. You're a real nice fella. Yeah. I guess the clothes are not so clean, huh? You're clean now, I think. I'm a, I'm a little dizzy. It's the first time I'm in such a big store. Yeah, I guarantee you, you won't forget it. Oh, here's a salesman now. I hope you have a nice Christmas. Thanks, I will. Yes, sir, can I interest you in a bicycle? Yes, I'm waiting for you. Oh, sorry, I was away for a minute. <laughs> Just going over a few things at the perfume counter. <laughs> now, uh, here's a bicycle that'll give you years of service. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Uh, how much do you intend to spend? <laughs> All I have is a $60. Well, exactly the price of this bicycle. Automatic brakes, all chrome body, fog lights, heater, the works. Fine. I take it. Here's my 60 Mamma mia. What, is something wrong, sir? My, my $60, it's, it's a missing. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. It's one of America's favorite phrases, and certainly it's one of America's favorite shows. It's Hit the Jackpot, which you'll hear in just a little later tonight over most of these same CBS stations. Tonight, the jackpot will be worth $25,000 to the listener or studio guest who cracks the mystery of the secret sentence. And if they all fail, the jackpot total will climb to 27000 Tuesday night's always great listening on CBS, so stay tuned for Hit the Jackpot a little later. <laughs> And now for the second act of Luigi Basco's Adventures in Chicago, we turn to page two of his letter to his mother in Italy. And so, Mamma Mia, 
I lose my sixty dollars, and Jimmy lose a beautiful bicycle with a shiny metal, a big beautiful tires, and a little piece of fur in the back. I think it's to keep a boy's feet warm when he rides on a cold day. I feel very sad in the side, but I hope a man who finds my money is a poor man, and he buys a bicycle like this for his little boy. So, salesman, he takes me to store detective who says it to me. Now, think hard, Mr. Bosco. Are you sure you came into this store with $60? I'm sure, Mr. Detective. I got the money from Paul Revere. And another thing I... <laughs> you got the money from who? Paul Revere. Not the guy with the horse. That's right. Now, uh, look, mister, why don't you lie down and rest a while? You know, walking around in these crazy crowds all day does something to a guy. You'll feel... Please. Like... I own an antique store, and this morning... I sell Paul Revere's statue for $60. Oh, for a minute you had me worried. Now, look, are you sure you came in here with the $60? Maybe you left it home with your wife. I'm not married. Yeah, that's right. A married guy wouldn't have 60 bucks in his pocket to begin with. <laughs> now, uh, tell me, Mr. Bosco. See? When did you first notice the money was missing? I'm standing next to Santa Claus. And no wonder that guy keeps yelling, Merry Christmas. No, no, Mr. Detective. It was not the Santa Claus. Uh, maybe not. Mr. Bosco, did anybody brush up against you in the crowd? Now think. No. Oh, only one nice man. He brushes off my clothes. Can you describe him? I don't remember too much. He had red hair, green eyes, a scar under the left eye. His nose, it's crooked. He wears a little orange bow tie. And he had that, yeah, it was a polka dot. And he walked with a limp. Well, you're not giving me much to go on. <laughs> Do you know his name or where he lives? He didn't tell me. Hmm. Please, Mr. Detective, maybe you'll find my $60 so I can buy Jimmy the bicycle. Well, I'll look around the store, Mr. Basco. Go see the manager and report your loss. Thank you. You say you want to report a loss in our store? Yes, sir, Mr. Manager. Well, now, uh, would you describe what you lost, please? Yes. Was a one dozen $5 bills, all green. <laughs> With a, with a picture of Lincoln on every bill, and then there yes, was... Yes, 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 Mr. Bosco. I'll just put down $60. Please, this money was to buy Christmas present for my boy Jimmy. A beautiful bicycle with a piece of fur on I'm the back. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but of course our store can't be responsible. You understand? Merry Christmas, everybody. Ah, nuts! <coughs> Please! What kind of language is this from a Santa Claus? Mr. Grover, I'm through playing Santa Claus in this store. Yeah, but why? I am turning in my suit, my whiskers, and my... Merry Christmas. Is it a question of money? No, it's not the money. I played Santa Claus in every department store, in every whistle stop in the country. But please... I am an actor! I play Santa Claus with so much feeling when I kiss my wife, I think I'm kissing a reindeer. <laughs> Will you please calm down and tell me what's troubling you? Please, Mr. Manager, my $60. You keep quiet. All right, Mr. Grover, I'll tell you what's bothering me. It's the class of kids you get here. They tear off my whiskers, tweak my nose, and the things they whisper into my ear. Especially that last kid. Now, what did he ask for? What Harry James would never give up. <laughs> no, I'm through, I tell you, I'm through. Now, I'm please, up. please, please, calm no, down. No, I've had enough, calm enough, down. enough, I tell please. you enough. Please, please, my money. I'm sorry, sir. If your money turns up, I let you know. Thank you. Say, say you. See, help me off with these whiskers, will you? I'm, I'm sorry you decide to go away, Mr. Santa Claus. Ah, this crummy giant doesn't know how to treat a great artist. Last year I played Santa Claus in the biggest department store in New York. I was so great they held me over until New Year's. Oh. <laughs> My clippings. I think you're fine. Too. I had the star's dressing room, a special makeup artist to do my face. Sure. My uniform was created by a Hollywood expert. But, but if you leave. The children, they may be very sad. You should see the hole I've got here for a dressing room. A broom closet between ladies' pajamas and men's sportswear. <laughs> but, but the poor little bambinos. Nobody here to ring a bell and holler Merry Christmas. And what have you got to be so merry about? You lost $60. Your kid's not going to get his bike. See, it's a bad thing. But not so bad as a Christmas for little kids who were out of Santa Claus. Well, if that's the way you feel about it here, you be Santa Claus. Me? I am quitting. It's a Merry Christmas, a little bambino. It's a Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. 
Are you comfortable under my lap, little bambino? Oh, definitely. That's a fine. Now, you tell us, Santa Claus, what do you want for Christmas? Well, I want a set of toy soldiers and two drums and a wagon <laughs> Good, and a I... football suit and a million comic books and skates. Oh, that's a fine. I'm going to get... And a sled get... and two drums and a scooter. <laughs> well, Santa Claus is going to need a truck. And a... Uh, whatever is the matter, Santa Claus? <laughs> well, it's a lot of presents. To get all this, Santa Claus is going to have to own a bank. Oh, you see, he doesn't have to. My father does. Oh. Now then, I want two drums and uh -huh. a pony and an electric train. It's a Merry Christmas, Bambinos. A Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> and what's, what's your name, little fella? Spud. <laughs> Spud. That's a fine name. Okay, now give me the loot and let me go home. <laughs> First, to tell a Santa. You been a good boy this year? I've been perfect. Mama's boy, a real sweet nose. Now, you sure you're telling a Santa the truth? Sure, my nose is clean. Is it not a good idea to tell a Santa Claus a lie, Spud? Well, except for the time me and Baldy Harris put the stink bomb under old lady Schultz's window. Uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, why do you do that? Because she called a cop on us. And uh, why, Mrs. Schultz, did she call a cop? Because I busted her window after she took away my pea shooter. Is the only time uh, the nose is she's not the cleanest, Bud? Well, we got one mean teacher in school, and last year I used up two boxes of tax on her. Is there more dirt on the nose, Bud? Oh, just a few little things like that. Is it going to need a handkerchief like a tablecloth to make your nose clean? <laughs> well, I guess I don't rate no presents this year, Santa. But if I had another chance, I I'd make good. Well, Spud, Zach... I... <laughs> He's all right, I suppose. Important thing is that you promise to be good a boy next year. Oh, I will. Now, tell us, Santa Claus, what do you want for Christmas? I'd like a pea shooter, two stink bombs, and two boxes of tash. <laughs> it's a Merry Christmas, Bambinos. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Come. Come, sit on a Santa's lap, a little girl. Oh. Now you tell Santa Claus, what do you want for Christmas? Oh, I'd like a bicycle. Me too. You don't? <laughs> why, why, you don't need a bicycle. I'm just thinking of a little boy who like a bicycle too. Santa Claus, can I have a mama doll and a carriage and a teddy bear and two hats of It's a Merry Christmas, Bambino. It's a Merry Christmas. <laughs> and here's Santa Claus, Robert. Now you just step up there and tell him what you want for Christmas. Go on, Robert. Don't be shy. <laughs> Robert. Please. Please, I talk to him, lady. Hello, little Robert. Hello, Santa Claus. You want to touch your Santa's whiskers? Go ahead and touch. It's a nice and a soft. And it was a dry clean, only today. <laughs> Santa Claus, how did you get here? Like everybody else. You see, I take a Dearborn Street car, then I transfer it over the whole... Thing. <laughs> Don't get delusion, the child. Mamma mia. Lady, I'm sorry, I forget. I come here just to buy a bicycle for Jimmy. Well, I've never seen such a Santa Claus. M manager... But where's the manager of this store? Lady, please, I only tried to help out. I want the manager. Hey, what's going on here? What is this? Please, it's all for the little bambino. Are you the manager, sir? That's right, I'm Mr. Groban. Is there something wrong? Well, yes. What kind of a Santa Claus do you have in this store? Well, madam, I don't... How do you expect a child to believe in a Santa Claus that, that talks with an accent? I'm sorry, lady. You come back next year. I'm going to study very hard, and it's going to be a Santa Claus with a perfect English. Say, aren't you the fellow who's in my office? The other Santa Claus, he got excited and he goes away. So I say to myself, little kids, they come to stores and they don't see Santa Claus. And what are you going to tell them? Santa Claus, he don't like the place. He say it's a crummy. <coughs> well, I... So I think, I think maybe I'll be Santa Claus till a new one shows up. But a Santa Claus speaking with a, with an accent. Please, it's not important to children how Santa Claus he speaks. They only think... Is a Santa Claus to make them happy? Is a Santa Claus nice and a fat? Is a Santa Claus to make good promises? If a yes, everything, it's a fine. And the children, they're happy. Mm, well, I... Uh... All right. 
Okay. I take off a suit. I'm a sorry. Maybe I'm not a good Santa Claus because it's the first time I ever see him. In my country, is no call to Santa Claus. In other country, is a mother star and a father star. In some places in Europe, is Saint Nicholas. In Norway, is a Jules Nissen, the naughty elf. But it doesn't make no difference to kids. I, I don't know what to say, Mr. Basco. I... Uh, I'm sorry, sir. Maybe you don't believe in a Santa Claus. I think I do now. Mr. Basco, would you do me a favor and keep the uniform on until I can arrange to get a steady one from the agency? Of course, you'll be paid. Oh, please, no pay. Being a Santa Claus isn't no work. Well, It's then, a pleasure. Uh, let me repay your kindness. Please pick out any gift you want in the store. Oh, thank you. It's a one time when a Santa Claus will get a present, no? It's a Merry Christmas, Mr. Bambino. It's a Merry Christmas. <laughs> Please, Mr. Santa Claus, can you tell me a story? Sure. Was once a little boy named Jimmy O'Connor who got a bicycle for Christmas so every... Mamma Mia, I'm a happy like a little boy because Santa Claus will take care of my Jimmy and give him a bicycle. Also, I'm sending you package canned food. Invite the whole family for Christmas dinner. Is a Luigi Bosco plan instead of a Marshall plan. <laughs> Maybe, Mamma Mia, by next year I make enough for money so you come here too. It's so wonderful to be here all year round. But especially wonderful now. If I could afford, I send a Christmas card to all American people and say, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, American people. P.S. You're a loving son of Luigi, the little immigrant. Be sure to listen next week at this same time over most of these stations when Luigi Basco writes another letter to Mama Basco describing his adventures in America. Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production and is written by High Craft and Cy Howard and stars J. Carol Nash as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed as Pasquale. Music is directed by Wilbur Hatch. Maury Amsterdam's loose in his cafe a little later tonight on CBS. Maury Amsterdam, the bright comedy star of New York's nightclubs, not only takes you out front for the show, but also hauls you backstage for the crazy difficulties he gets into running his radio nightclub. They're headaches for Maury, but they're fast and furious fun for you. So listen just a little later tonight when the Maury Amsterdam show presents another chapter in the misadventures of running a nightclub over most of these same CBS network stations. Bob Lamont speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.